that sometimes church is just too boring. What happens when high school lovebirds get married? They move to a new city and start a YouTube channel, of course. Welcome, Welcome to Adventures of XYZ. I'm Zondre. And I'm Zara. I'm a doctor. And I'm a lawyer. But we both just really love sharing our faith and going on cool adventures. So we created this channel to share our journey as we attempt to use biblical principles to navigate life. And have a whole lot of fun doing it. So, come, come along with us! Alright guys, so... A lot happened. And so let me just finish my thought and then I kind of tell you what happened after that. So all I was saying was that if you have never said hello, you've never had a conversation with somebody, you don't have their best interests at heart, then, you know, maybe correcting them is not your calling right now. And you might see something wrong, hold on to it for a second. And then start to build a rapport with the person before you start telling them what to do with them life. Mm -hmm. You know, start to build a rapport with them. Start to help them with actual tangible things take for example when jesus was here you know he used to heal the sick he used to help the lame to walk and he used to let the blind see before he used to give, give food to the hungry before he started to try to fix their spiritual problems that is true and to be honest if you don't care about the person please don't say anything like if you're if you don't care enough to actually help the person with their temporal needs and so on and i'm not saying that you know if you don't have money can give people then you can't help them with with spiritual things but i'm saying do what you can to fix those things that are not out of your reach and people will appreciate it assuming it's done with love <laughs> so on our way on our way home you know we were doing the vlog the bachelor dead and then so that's when we're at the so beach. that's when we're at the beach and then as we started to drive off and everything we met some friends at the, the beach side and whatever then I just feel like the van starts to slow down. Then Zandre said, look at like, Runout, I guess, you know. Yeah, the van just start lose power as we go up the hill and I'm just like, no man, the last time I see this happening is when I run out of gas. <laughs> but um, the gas gauge stopped working. So we kind of just gauge the amount of fuel in the vehicle based on the mileage that we've covered oh, since the last time that we fill up. Yeah, yeah and usually daddy. I'm on point. Yeah. That is more accurate than accurate I am. Yeah, yeah. But on Friday, I started to feel a little antsy about it. So I went and I put $5,000 in there so that I can fill up at my regular gas station. We were almost home. Like, and we were just going to stop at the gas station down the foot of the hill yeah. before we came up. We didn't make it to the gas station. We never made it. But luckily... Luckily, I married a masculine man, okay? I married, I married a handy man. So, <laughs> man, you just go to the back and him just take up him in, in, in bottle of gas. Yeah, I always him, have a bottle of Yeah, I'm always having a bottle of diesel, my bad. I come around and then, of course, you know, being the supportive wife that I am. <laughs> she came outside to help me. <laughs> come outside, you know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't still, but um, <laughs> the, like, one time, one time, I did, the, 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 the van they brought down power already. I remember, mm. I did help you start it up, so, you know, I start it up, start it up. <laughs> I'm going to start it while you spray. So you're going to switch it on, yeah. and then when I give you the thumbs up, uh -huh. you're going to start the video. Alright, cool. switch it on, so I'm switch it on now. Alright. Cool. Alright. When you see me spray, I'll just tell you. Alright. Yes, yes, yes. Little bit of gas? Just little bit of gas. Yeah. Alright, alright. That's good, that's good, that's good. <laughs> Nevertheless, we made it out. And you know, life comes with sometimes we broke down upon the roadside. Oh, we have yep. to be, we have to be able to to step our game up, you know. Yeah. Do what we have and to do. keep driving. Yeah. <laughs> Alright guys. Next We're time. too closed minded and exclusive. Okay, so I have no progress set in ways because Jesus is never changing. Alright, same thing. Yeah. We're, I'm, I'm, we're, we, I agree with yeah. you. Yeah. Same thing. Why are we so opposed to change? <laughs> change is not inherently a bad thing, you know. <laughs> and if we as a church would adopt a growth mindset and realize that over time as problems evolve so should our solutions as cultures change then it means that our approach to ministry must also change our approach. jesus never changes biblical principles never, never change. change but the application of said principles will necessarily need to change yeah i have a, i have a very clear example go right ahead so 
I spoke about a church visit that we went to, and I talk about we went yeah. to King's SD. Yeah. And when we went to King's SD, I based on whatever was happening or based on whatever they recognized that new converts were not staying in the church. Mm-hmm. So they instead of having a sermon, they had like a I don't know if it was a two or three part series, but they had a series where they had statistics and you know showing why people why new converts don't stay and kind of why there is such a low church retention rate and what people needed to do to keep these people. And I thought that was a bur- brilliant because it meant agree, that the church so had an issue whether it be king specifically or it just means that as a church there's an issue mm-hmm. and they picked up the issue and decided that this is going to be a special feature in their in their program so instead of having like a sermon they had a whole panel discussion about it i spoke about it in the vlog and somebody commented and said that if it is if it is not a sermon in divine service Ch- it never church no he said or she we're said, not sure if it was a he or she oh good point the person but the said, person said mm. if worship does not have a sermon it it's is just a regular meeting. meeting it's not worship, worship right and we were so <laughs> like befuddled there are other ways to make this a useful worship service mm-hmm. and especially when these people are targeting their program to meet actual congregational needs, needs. Yeah, yeah yeah like yeah. you come out of nowhere completely clueless as to what is happening at the people them church yeah and you're going to take contention with the fact that they took whether it's one or two divine services i'm not sure whatever it is yeah yeah, yeah. to deal with an actual problem <laughs> but no their opposition was their misconception of a bible verse the bible verse i think it was in isaiah that said um god is never changing so they think that means that you must never change the church program at any point like you cannot be so stuck in your ways or else that is going to lead to a low retention rate exactly people are going to leave to a more progressive space um i'm trying to find a verse Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Is that even though that person was brave enough to, you know, come under the video and said what they want to say is a free space, but that person represents so many people in the church, so many people yep. who will never listen to the youth's voice. Nope. And I guess it's a subtopic because another thing that I thought about was the fact that youths feel voiceless because yep. they have these grand ideas these ways to worship or ways to to learn about the bible and ways to learn about god's innovation. character innovation innovation through social media if i had listened to people you know most of people say oh we talk too much about business yeah, on the internet we overshare. we overshare that may or may not be true but we're okay with but what we are we do. okay with it and yeah. it's, a, it's a unique approach to ministry yeah. that somebody who will never ever sit in and listen to a sermon will sit and watch these videos so the solution to this is church leaders church members because i don't want us to put all this blame on leaders on and, and we cannot show you why yep. but we all have a role to play as time evolves situations also evolve yep and so our approach to problems must also evolve definitely so one of my reasons is that life gets in the way so people get busy and when people get oh, busy oh you know i had that one where i took it out because i only had space for seven <laughs> <laughs> people get busy and because the foundation was so weak then yeah. the church and god is no longer a priority it's an indispensable part of their lives because yeah. they never did what they needed to do the church never facilitated it's a dispensable that. part it's a dispen- it. yeah, yeah it's a dis- sorry it's a dis- no, 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 the word eh? yeah, it's a dispensable part of their routine so work work gets in the way school yeah. gets in the way um social expectations gets in the way but because we never helped to build a solid foundation this this could be a them problem it doesn't have to be and a church right. problem right mm-hmm. but I it's a reason never the a reason nevertheless mm-hmm. and and i'm really happy that you make that point because i never you had wanted it but to i wanted it. to make it <laughs> and guys i really want to say that you're wasting your time if you're coming to church to put up appearances yeah. and to please everybody else looking on whether it's your father your elder your sister your brother if your real reason to come into for coming to church is because somebody say you have to come you're really wasting, wasting your, your time, time. And I appreciate your approach to make this particular reason not so much about the those church. of us who yes. have victimized people, mm-hmm. but each of us as an individual who really has victimized ourselves. Exactly. Because failure to invest in your own spiritual relationship with God is necessarily a waste of time. Definitely, definitely. I think one of the biggest ways it magnifies is when it comes to school and work and i've seen it you've seen it over and over again yep. when people come to university and they'll say stuff like how can you give up a whole day where you don't study of studying how can yeah. you give up all of friday night all of saturday 
and you don't study or they'll say stuff like what you mean by your plan and program for advent fellowship when you, you have, have when you have exam in prime exam season let me tell you something i can testify, testify i have never sister, failed a testify. course i can testify that scholarships brought me through university testify. i can testify on behalf of my husband okay. that scholarships also brought him through university that he has not matter of fact don't use a nerd so he has always gotten a's i don't you ever get a b of course we get b one time no man a couple times maybe two <laughs> the young people who are watching this at some point it's no longer about what your mother did what the church yeah. did it's no yeah. longer about the leaders it's about what did you do or did, what did you not do? or what did you not do yeah. because when the time comes to test your faith when you seem like you're desperate then who do you rely on you're not going to see god as somebody to rely on so you just leave mm -hmm. and then with leaving the church you eventually leave god so that's why i like this point because it really kind of points the finger back at yourself yeah mm -hmm. i can't forget the time that i was studying for um for it was my ent practical exam and it airs no tantrum well done baby <laughs> Oh wait! Oh, sorry. oh, come, come! Uh -huh. I give up. I was studying for my ENT exam, but then a lot of Advil things needed to get done. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying to burden yourself with so much church work that there's no space for Balance. you to study. Balance. Exactly, because if you don't study none at all, then what gotta go use? You, know, <laughs> you, you need some knowledge. But um, but there was a lot going on, and mark you, I felt committed. I felt called to do what I was doing, so I wasn't I wasn't particularly pressured. But there was a lot of work to do. By the time I was done studying, by the time I was done working with Advil and so on, didn't have much time to study for the exam. And the night before the exam, you see, babe, mm -hmm. I went to the library and I looked at the book and I was just like, okay, what can I study out of this book? Wow. And I prayed and I said, God, please show me, show me what oh, to study gosh. in this exam. And he brought me to thyroid. Oh yeah, I remember, thyroid, remember the thyroid thyroid story. Yeah, 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 yeah. And guys, I read thyroid that night, you see, and I Thoroughly. fell asleep reading thyroid, you know. <laughs> and I wake up back the next morning and I said, God, what well, I must read? And God said, thyroid. thyroid said, like God, it. that don't make no sense. <laughs> because there are like 16 or 17 topics in this book. And I need to read as many of them as possible before I go into the exam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna read thyroid again. Mark you going into ENT. The topic I knew the best was thyroid. thyroid. <laughs> so you see, when I went to the exam, it was around 11 o'clock the day. I went to the exam, and I walked in and I saw that my consultant, not gonna call his name, but was actually somebody that I knew from Advil. And for those who don't know Advil, if this is your first time watching this video, Advent Fellowship is a group of seven day Adventist students on the campuses of UE and Utech. If you're interested in joining, you can message them at FELJA on Instagram, or you can always message me and I'll forward you their page. And that was an announcement on behalf of Advent, Advent Fellowship. Fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> So I walked in and I realized that this gentleman is somebody I knew from Adfield because he was a past president. Mm -hmm. When I walk in, he said, Wait, Zondre, what you doing here, man? <laughs> <laughs> Laugh and chat for about a minute or two and that really calmed me down. Yeah. And then he said, All right, so we have 15 minutes to talk about as many topics as we can. Yes. So I said, Yeah, many topics, boy. I don't know me I'm going to manage it. And I said, All right, I'm going to show you a picture and then you start telling me about what you see. So when the man turn around the computer and I see a big neck mass, Thyroid. I just go, sir, <laughs> this patient has a neck mass likely, a thyroid mass. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. And guys, I went through in. on and on and on. He thyroid. did not have a come minute in thyroid, to come in. Thigh. Another thigh you're doing? Oh. No, oh, ready. Oh. Thigh. Right. Hey. Let me tell you about the thyroid gland. Hey. The thyroid gland is in the neck. Hey. In the neck, it makes T S H at no line of this Thyroid. 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 Yo, that was so bad. That was so bad. Guys, I feel like our neighbors can see us and, and this is very weird. But anyway, I spoke about thyroid for 14 and a half minutes. Oh you see, when he realized that the only thing I've spoken about was thyroid, he said, no, 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 no it's Andre, I've got to stop you there, so no. Next question, and he turned around the computer to me and showed me a picture of something in somebody's ear. I was so clueless. I did not know what to say, but by the time I was supposed time to say up. anything, time up. That is Jesus right there. Can't tell me that is not Jesus. Can't tell me that is not Jesus. The one topic that I studied is the one that came on the exam for 14 and a half minutes out of 15. Come on, guys. 
Put God first. Put Jesus first. Prioritize man. God in your life. All right, guys. Next one. Church politics. I don't have that one. I'm glad you said it though. Come, I never remember. Church politics. I can't take it. Matter of fact, I never know. No I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't really do the I'm, church. I politics have no thing. opinions. Yeah. <laughs> so who want to talk about NAD this yeah, and GC no. this and, and conference, conference I do not this care. And don't, this care. And don't care. Don't care. And don't ask me my opinion because I don't have I one. I don't have one. <laughs> it's fine if you have one. You know, not saying to not have one, but I don't think I need one. <laughs> not affecting the price of rice for me. It's People running. are hurt by it. Yeah, that's true. And um, this running down of power and of position and stuff. When somebody asks you to serve in the church, consider it an honor to have, you know, to have been asked to serve on Honor. behalf of God. Yeah. But also take it with a grain of salt because when you get a position, you know, it comes with a whole heap of baggage that a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. It's not something to be congratulated. When somebody gets a position, pray for them. It's pray true. for them. Because spiritual warfare is not easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. Mm-mm. But anyway, that's all that I'll say on church politics. Yeah, because we're but, not try to get in there. Yeah, we're not try to tie up. Yeah, we're not try to tie up our tongue. But sometimes people see how dirty the church politics is, and them say if you're at the helm of this ship, mm-hmm. and it's so shaky up there, then mm-hmm. I probably don't want to be there. But I just like to encourage the young person who's seeing that though to realize that you're not in church to serve the leaders. There we go. You're in church to serve God. I have one that said that people leave the church because of high expectations when they didn't have a really stable foundation. Hmm. So you expected them to be like sister so and so daughter and brother so and so daughter, but you don't know all that what sister so and so did for their daughter. Yeah. And I can use myself as an example because people love to tell my mother say how oh, me is one of them. They want this and the young people they must stay like Zara. Hey. Then try with me. <laughs> so a lot of young people leave the church because frankly their parents never try, never with, try them. with them. Parents because one, you put a lot of pressure on school and church to do yeah. the work. And the church now do this. The children's ministry is now do this. Yeah. Parents have such a big role to play in children's lives. Definitely. Them say train up a child in the way he should he would grow and when he grows old he won't depart from it. Facts. Big facts. Because at the end of the day, if he grows old and decides to depart from it, it wouldn't the burden wouldn't be on you anymore. It wouldn't be your cross to carry. And sometimes I think um, a lot of a lot of a lot of children were raised in a very you must do this and if you don't do this you'll go to hell or very yeah, sheltered. Very too. very sheltered and like a long list of rules and regulations yeah. and they weren't taught principles yes and i think that's the difference between a kind of how our parents raised yeah. us with we were taught principles yeah at different points in life you know i was taught that principle and i was given the opportunity to make a decision yeah. so by the time i needed principle i remember the first time i was on facebook and i remember somebody at church asking mommy how she allow me on facebook and mommy was like <laughs> you know i i monitor her facebook i give her the opportunity to go on social media because i give her rules to stand by and then it was with that responsibility that i was allowed to be online while a lot of the people who were in the junior class junior class at the time i was in they weren't allowed to because their parents say yeah. or they weren't allowed to go to school activities because it was it was bad mm-hmm. meanwhile my mother would send me after sunset especially if it was on a saturday night but then she would send me because she would have she would have given me the principles to know what yeah. i was not supposed to do and what i was supposed to do and that's very important and by 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 giving the youngsters that amount of space for them to make decisions on their own but at the same time showing them so much love and care on the back end that they trust your judgment Mm-hmm. If it is that you suggest to them that they go a certain path, they will have no qualms going there. My father very rarely ever says, No, don't do this. Okay. My father very rarely says that. If I want to go somewhere with some people, daddy kind of like a weary of it, <laughs> daddy's not going to say, No, Zo, you're not going. Mm-hmm. He's going to say, Boy, Zo, sure you want to do that? I'm not so sure what go away I go on with those people, you know. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it's not so not so pretty them. The moment he says that, mm-hmm. I don't want to disappoint my father because he allows me to do almost anything that I want to do, mm-hmm. having already 
you know, trained me to appreciate the good things and shun the bad ones. Yeah. And so in that moment when he starts to push up his eyebrows at something, even if I can't see to the end of the road, yeah. I just know, say, all right, back off. Mm -hmm. And if it comes to it where he will have to put his foot down to say, no, you're not going, then I'm sure he would have, but thankfully. It, he never had it to. Never, he never had but, to. But, and then what would be the, the flip side to that? For like somebody who's very dogmatic and, and very controlling. As in how you compare that to what so, to not do? Right. Oh, I've seen it. Yeah. I wish I didn't see it for the sake of the person involved. Yeah. But I've seen where a particular um, gentleman was so dogmatic and so strict with his children mm -hmm. they were they were not allowed to do anything to go anywhere to spend any time with anybody and they were always cloaked up and you could see that they never even wanted to talk you know yeah. you get the impression that they're well behaved but really what they were is probably depressed mm -hmm. you know and then the moment moment them leave them parents yeah Gone. broke out yeah man and it's always that yeah man it's always broke that out. it's always that so there's a very thin line um parenting is not easy i can imagine read some books man there there's a lot to do and and also i think one of the things that i know that a lot of parents do is you just have to be led by the holy spirit yeah so for some reason i have two left and zara has none i think it's because ours overlap yeah you win <laughs> Cause you have that I don't have. Okay. So I think, I think you may have gone twice, one behind each other. But we're very slice it or dice it. We're at a place now where I have two left. Okay. And I just said the two of them real quickly. The first one is that church appears to be antagonistic to science. When students go to school and learn one thing, but then they come to church and they learn something else, they're now forced to choose between what they are learning at school, which is thoroughly explained, with logical examples and deep reasoning and a lot of evidence versus what they learn at church which they never really learned they were just told 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 nobody dissected it and explained it for them they just kind of tell them and say eat this yeah you just can. agree just just yeah. but but then there's some cognitive dissonance mm -hmm. and one is now forced to choose between two seemingly mutually exclusive options either you believe what you learn at school or you believe what you learn at church or at least what you're told at church so I think there are a couple of things That's wrong with this. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. I think the first one is a principle that Sister White had had outlined. Auntie Ellen, she said that science and religion are not mutually exclusive. In fact, they're complementary. Mm. So much so that if science and religion contradict each other, one of them is wrong. Most times it's science because <laughs> science tends to change over time. Exactly. But here is the caveat to that. If the religious principle that is being taught is not a pure one, then it's quite likely wrong too. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. So both of them can be wrong, mm -hmm. as well as one can be wrong and the other one right, but both of them cannot be right. Here's where our role comes in as a church though. We need to teach from fundamental principles and build them all the way up mm -hmm. in just the same way that the secular um, learning environment teaches things from, prince, yeah. from first and, principles and yeah. build up we also need to teach biblical principles from first principles and build up and that way when people have questions they're, they're solidly answered and people can see that science and religion are not mutually exclusive but in fact science brings to life the things that were reported in the bible yeah, so what about the fact that um, science is built a lot on facts, mm -hmm. while religion is built a lot on faith? How do we explain that? Alright, I don't believe that facts and faith are mutually exclusive. exclusive. Okay. Like, off the bat, let's establish that. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some components of religion that you will have to accept by faith, but there is evidence to support that decision to accept that thing by faith okay so if we study the evidence that is available to us mm -hmm. then it will give us enough reason to trust the character of god that what god wants is in fact what's best for us and then by virtue of having accepted his abundant love for us we will go ahead to accept everything else that he says that we cannot comprehend by faith but if you don't first understand the it things that so are smart. given as evidence then like 
you're not going to be able to accept anything by faith, really. That's fair. And so that's why it's so important that we study and that we are taught even from first principles and come all the way up. And and that when we ask questions, they're not like shunned, you know? Mm-hmm. So the last thing now, yeah. the last thing, I don't think you said it explicitly, mm-hmm. but I think both of us agree mm-hmm. that sometimes church is just too boring. Oh yeah, I had that. I don't know why I never, yeah, I have worship is not attractive. I don't know why I never said it. <laughs> but guys, sometimes church is just plain boring. Yeah, drop a sleep star. Honestly, if you have fall asleep in a church every week, and I don't mean you as a person, because if you're like me and you drop asleep in a church every week, it might be because you work every Friday night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. That might be that problem. Yeah. But if everybody in the congregation falling asleep, then it's not the congregation fault. Like, you're doing something wrong. Well, uh, <laughs> and the thing is, the other place that young people going in a boring. In a now, boring. And you know. In a boring. And I want to also add to Zon, to kind of balance the perspective, is that a lot of times, because of what we're feeding our minds, we don't find the things of God attractive. Attractive, that's so true. So our appetites are so warped that holy things are not entertaining it mm-hmm. is not exciting because look on how we take up a bible study and you know i just thought about it i have yeah. a, a thought to share yeah. but go ahead so a lot of things are, are not attractive but i know that's not the perspective you're coming from mm-hmm. you're more talking from when church full of fluff and full yes. of unnecessary stuff and it just need for happen for happening sake mm-hmm. or you have people who are bringing the word who really and truly and never let them come in <laughs> And then spend all day bringing and greetings. And all day bring greetings. And we don't need the greetings on across the world. Just say good morning. I don't even know if you're coming the name of him and she and everybody else. I'm sorry. It's not that important. Yeah. Anyway. So I know that's what you're talking about. But I just wanted to say, to kind of balance the perspective. No, yeah, that, that's important. That the more we feed our minds with holy things, yeah. the more the holy things will excite us. But the holy things don't always have to be the same old traditional things that we've always known. And I yeah. think that's the perspective that you're coming yeah. from. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. yeah, certainly. And also, I was thinking about that Bible study we had over by Raim the other day. The other day, yeah. I and don't I think, think we posted the video of that yet. Okay, so, well, you guys might see the video yeah. at some point. But I find it very hard to believe that in... In a conversation like that, there would be anybody who would be falling asleep. No, it was it was on fire. I'm gonna be more focused on individual growth. Yeah. And doing what serves best the people who are sitting or standing in front, in front of, of you, you instead of doing things for the sake of doing them that way because that's how they've always been done. So like practically, what does making church attractive look like for you? Alright. And then I can maybe tell you what it looks like. What for it me. looks like for you. Yeah. Fair. Cut out the fluff <laughs> out of the church program. Please cut out the fluff cut out the fluff if but it is not adding to the mm. service in terms of what your outcome is mm. don't do it because that's how it has always been how worked. much freedom and flexibility you in a church leadership more than me but how much freedom and flexibility when we have we yes, have a so. world church that tells us what to do in a union tells us what to do in a conference that tells us what to do how much freedom does a local church have to like change up their program a lot of freedom okay almost uh, and i say almost but 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 almost entire freedom really at the I level of the that. church board these decisions are made oh and ultimately the ultimate decision making body in the church is the membership of the church mm. so decisions are arrived at at the church board level and a lot of things need to be ratified by a decision made at a members meeting mm. the church the local church has a lot of power to make decisions about how their particular programs run mm. but let me tell you what the real issue is yeah the real issue is that at the local church level most people are not willing to make these radical moves okay. so when you go to a place like kings and see them make that decision to to to, to, to not have the sermon at that point but a panel discussion that mm-hmm. was just more suitable for, for that, that particular, particular time. you see that there is room for them to do that but there is necessarily going to be backlash all church looks practically all right i'll give you a, an example and i know the guys at um new kingston if you ever watch this you know, <laughs> i love you guys big up on yourself big up yourself <laughs> Come on me, you're good you um but when I think about the fact that when New Kingston Fellowship started out, that was beautiful. Oh my gosh, man. We used to be there all the time. Yeah. It's almost like we were members. But at the time when it was a fellowship, I haven't been back yeah. quite recently, but the last time I went, it was still quite similar. But when that church was just a fellowship, they would come in the morning, mm. they would pray, they would sing, they would have a little conversation, they would go into the, the study of the lesson, mm-hmm. a very detailed discussion. Yeah, not just no not a five presentation, minutes that, but or a, like a five minutes where you have no. to wrap up. Mm-mm. Yes, it was just 
and, and the reason they were able to not only do it for five minutes is because all time. the other stuff wasn't going to happen. You have the bag of things. Yeah, and then they would now go into a detailed study, big up yourself, Elder Cassie. <laughs> and then they would go and they would have a detailed study um yeah. from the um from the Sabbath school lesson. Mm-hmm. And then after the Sabbath school lesson, they would have praise and worship. Oh, I love, love a good praise, praise and, and worship. worship yes. Please, why is praise and worship the most dispensable part of the program? Well, yeah, when you only want something to cut, you cut it. Yeah. No, I did love the praise and worship. <laughs> anyway, and then after praise and worship, somebody would come up, they'd introduce the speaker, they would read the scripture reading, and they'd call it the offering, and then they'd go straight into the sermon. That's it. And I think there would be like a special song. But they were very keen on focusing on the two most important, three most important things. And I'll tell you what the third one is in a while. The first two were the Bible study about, mm-hmm. um, well, I don't think it was a Sabbath school lesson, you know what I'm thinking, but it, it was, was a Sabbath Bible school, study. it was a series no. that they were going through them for did, new converts. No man, them did, have Bible, them did have Sabbath school lesson, man. Or the Sabbath school lesson come afterward. But, but anyway. Uh, anyway, it was a component, and then they would have children's church. So yes. they would never have to like pass a children's story, because mm-hmm. children's church was separate altogether. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But the point is that they knew that at that time they needed to water new seeds basically. So the people who were just starting to come to church, because mm-hmm. there were a lot of new converts yeah. there. New, brand new, brand new church, brand just new starting church. out. Yeah. Exactly, so they went ahead and they taught. For most of it, it was teaching, teaching. and yeah. it was actual discussions that were very, very enlightening. Mm-hmm. And they never bothered with everything else. And then, so, so they used to focus on that first study in the morning. Mm-hmm. Then the sermon, they used to put quite a lot of emphasis on the sermon, which can I tell you was never more than 40 minutes. Like, not trying to get myself in any troubles, but most times people can't last yeah. more than that. We won't let it in over 40 minutes. <laughs> I mean, if it is, you can pause it and come back to it. That's the good thing. And then they would now move on to lunchtime fellowship that's the third thing lunchtime fellowship was so nice it was so because they made the best food <laughs> so, yeah, no if food bad for children food, food vegetarian food those days i don't know what it's like anymore that's like two years ago two three years ago yeah that's about Kingston. two three years ago yeah there was always either a cup of soup and a, and a piece of bread or you had like a good vegan spread and yeah that was lovely <laughs> but we would sit down and start to eat and about five minutes into the eating somebody would come up and just start telling everybody happy birthday and happy anniversary so and stuff all like of that. that fluff that was it coming at lunchtime at shit. lunchtime when you had the option to listen or to leave or to do whatever you want to do and if you were interested you'd stay and you'd listen yeah. then they'll do all of that niceties all those niceties and then they would now proceed with a bible study Mm-hmm. And the Bible study would take place with your plate of food in front of you the same way. Everybody would start to study. And then as you now need to leave, you would get up and leave. But a lot of people stayed for the Bible study. That is and true. And I learned so much in those Bible studies, I can remember, I tell you? I remember. So that would be like an ideal, very attractive service for you. That would be an attractive service for me. However, bear in mind that that will soon lose its novelty. Mm-hmm. And something else will need to take its place. Mm-hmm. So, but, but just pay attention on what you're hoping to accomplish. The point I'm making guys is that at that point they knew what they wanted to accomplish which was to teach certain biblical principles Mm -hmm. they focused on that keeping the main thing the main thing then added on things only as necessary but they never had things there just for the sake Sake of of having them yeah and i think that's what the ideal like an attractive session would look like for me not necessarily something that i can tell you how it looks like right now but i love to see that a service is tailored to the yes. situation the only way we'll do that is if we actually know the people them yeah and understand what, and understand need. what their needs are because if we don't then you're barking up the wrong tree again i mean we know this video is long but we really 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 hope that it helps and i think what we would want to conclude in is that young people are doing the church because of us it's our fault it's our fault predominantly and, and and I say us because all of us have to take responsibility for it. Yeah. Can't start pointing fingers. Mm-hmm. And we speak so strongly about it now because in a lot of ways we've seen the folly of our previous way of thinking. Mm-hmm. We've also seen friends and have been suffering from church hurt mm-hmm. who've left the church because of... just. M- I don't know very many people who leave the church because of fundamental issues with our fundamental beliefs, you know? No, no. Always because of people. Because Most of people because or of people. how people treat you or the things mm-hmm. that the church not doing that the church should be doing or mm-hmm. things that the church said they're supposed to do but they're not actually doing. These are the things why people leave. And, and we say it's our fault because... Because every member is responsible to help with church retention, to help the young people. Um, and, and, and we say young people because, I mean, those are the people we're advocating for right now, but everybody leaves at some point. Yeah. 
you know younger people older people we all have a responsibility and when we stop pointing fingers at leaders and pointing fingers at conference and pointing fingers at and start looking on what can, what can I do, I do in as my a corner? Yeah. You know, you might not be able to reach 20, but you might can reach one. And if 20 people reach one, I still 20. Tw- still 20. Still exactly. 20. Last. If we were more relationship oriented and less program oriented, I think our church would be leaps and bounds ahead of where we are. Mm. Stop looking at church as a series of programs, but see church as a collection of people. Who need to interact with each other and need to interact with God. Bolster these individual, interpersonal, and vertical relationships, and I can promise you that our church will regain strength. Right. When people ask you how to fix this problem, ask yourself which relationship has been breached. How do I fix that relationship? Thanks. You might need a program to help you fix the relationship, but if the idea is to put on the best possible program, then you're barking up the wrong tree. Wrong tree, wrong tree. And I mean, I know that we are Adventists, so that's why we speak from this perspective. Yeah. But I know that the young people living in church is a universal issue, regardless of your denomination, it's a universal yep. issue. So these are issues and these are solutions that you can also look out for in your church. Because I mean, we can't give a church Baptist perspective because we don't we don't go there. Sorry, so we I can't give a Pentecostal perspective because we don't go there. So a lot of even though you'll hear all, some of these examples, we know that this is a universal yeah. issue. So we really hope that this video is helpful to you who's watching this or listening to it. If you're listening to it as a podcast, it's a little lengthy, and we know we've been talking for a long time. I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. Yeah, I agree. And obviously, we're not having it in church. So <laughs> continue the conversation in the comments. Let yeah. us hear your thoughts. I'm sure we left out some things. I'm a hundred percent sure we left out some things. Definitely. But we'll keep it going. Keep the conversation going. But remember, at the end of the day, to take personal responsibility for everything that you can do. To first of all, make sure that your relationship with God is good, mm-hmm. and also to help the people around you. Yeah, and I mean, young people will need faith. You also need to want it. Exactly. At the foundation of everything, yeah. you have to want you it. You have to want Because it. at the end of the day, no church hurt can keep me away from God because, yeah. But anyways, <laughs> thank you so much for watching us on this episode of Adventures, Adventures of, of XYZ. XYZ. Bye. Bye. Guys.